Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geek Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to hide objects within your application. Now this feature is very simple and it's great for revealing or showing certain content to your users at any given time. We're also going to have the ability to detect whether an object has already been hidden or revealed by finding out the current state of its hidden attribute. So let's jump straight in to the tutorial. Okay then, so we're going to learn many ways on how we can hide objects. We're going to learn many of the abilities and capabilities that allow us to do this as we progress in this tutorial. But before we do progress, we're going to learn first how to initially hide an object. Once we've covered that, the basic ability to hide an object, we're going to then take it a step further. So already I have my project set up and it's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named the project Swift Hiding for the purpose of this tutorial. Now the first thing I'm going to do is jump into the main storyboard. I'm going to simply change our view here to a simple iPhone sized screen. And then I'm going to place in a few objects to initially learn and understand how we can hide objects. Now, hiding objects is very easy. All we're doing is we're getting the, the object that we want to hide, selecting the hidden property or attributes of that object, and changing what the value of it equals. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to drag up here our objects. And to trigger the ability to hide an object, we're going to be using a UI button. So I'll drag and drop that in. And initially, we're going to use a simple label as the object that we're going to hide and reveal. Now, we're just going to learn how we can hide it before we progress on to something a little bit more advanced on how we can hide multiple objects, how we can then reveal and um, kind of show individual objects, and how we can detect if an object has been hidden. So we got a button here, which is simply going to hide our label. We're also going to need a secondary button. Now I place that underneath, and the reason we need a second one is because this one is going to reveal the label. So we press our hide, it hides the label, we press our reveal, and then it brings the label back into view. That's basically what we want it to do. So we're going to do this by triggering the buttons. But you can also have objects on your view pre-hidden, meaning they can be hidden as soon as the view loads up. Now, with all the objects here, you can select any of them, and they all have its very own hidden attribute that we can select. So if I selected hidden, it's now, you see, it's a little bit grayed out. We can still see it on the view because we need to know it's there when we're configuring the interface. But when we be on run the application, that won't be there because we chose the object to be hidden. So that's how you can manually do it within the interface. But we want it to make sure that it's dynamic and we can hide and reveal objects at any given time. So what I'm going to do then is bring up the assistant editor, select the file as owner here, and I'll space out our outlet section, and I'll also space out our action section there. And I'm going to drag and drop our label over, and I'll simply call it label, and then add that in. I'm going to create two actions for our buttons. So our first one is going to be our hide action, making sure it's selected as an action, and connect that in. And then repeat the process for our reveal button, but making sure we name this one a little bit differently, just simply call it reveal, and create that as an action. Okay, so we're supposed to set the two buttons now, so we can then add what we want it to do and perform within the two um, curly brackets. So all we need to do, like I said before, is get the object that we want in our case is our label, because that's what we called it. And then we need to adjust the attribute to make it hide and reveal. So we do dot, and the attribute we're going to adjust is the hidden feature within all our objects. They all contain one of these. And we just make it equal a different value. Now, as this is the hide button, I want the hidden value to equal true, which means it will no longer be there to show. So if I write out true, this means that it will equal true to the hidden attribute of the label, which will be no longer visible on the screen. So if I repeat the process for our reveal, dot hidden, to this time equal false, which then means it will then reveal it. So if we just quickly go to build and run 
and see how this interacts and how it changes and how the label comes in and out of the view when we interact with our buttons. So this will just give us a simple basic understanding of how hiding and revealing objects works. And then we can go progress on something a little bit more in detail. So we've got a label in the middle, we can press our hide button, which again, will set our hidden value to equal true, which our label is no longer there. It's still on the screen, it's just we cannot see it. Uh, we can press as many times as we want, it's hidden now, it's not going to come back unless we press our reveal button. And once we do, because the value is equal and false, it then pops back into view. So it's very simple on how we can hide and reveal objects. So we're going to take this now a step further. We're now going to be able to hide multiple objects. And the reason I'm showing you this is because we're going to be using a UI view. Now a UI view, if we place it within our view, can also house its own objects. And it's just to show you that with our UI views, when they've got objects stored within them, we don't have to hide each and every object. We can just hide the view as a whole. Once we've done that, we're then going to talk about how we can detect if an object has been hidden and then perform actions on it. So back within our interface builder here, I'll quickly close our assistant editor. I'm now going to add in two UI views. So I place in one here. And I change the background color of it so it's a bit more visible. Let's go, let's go for a red color. It stands out quite a bit. And if I copy and paste it so we can add a secondary one in. And I change this color. Let's go with uh, let's go with green. There we go. So they stand out quite a bit and we can clearly see them on the screen. So what I'm gonna do then is add two buttons to each of these views. So we place our first button there, and I'll change the text color of it so it's so it's basically visible. I'll add a second one here. And I'm not too sure if you're able to see white because of how vibrant the green is. Um, do you know what? I'll change this one to have a black color. There we go. We can clearly now see these buttons. So what these buttons are basically being used there for is they're placed within our view. So if we only hide the view, you may be thinking, well, will the button still be there? And the answer is no, because the buttons are now being placed within our views, if we choose to hide and reveal the views themselves, then because the buttons are placed within them, they will also get hidden. So what I'm going to do then is bring up our assistant editor, as we're now going to add two new outlets for these two new views. So we drag and drop this one over, and I'll call this our red view. And the same for our green one, we call this our green view. There we go. So within our hidden section now, I'm now going to get our red view dot hidden to equal true. And then our green view dot hidden to equal again also true. Now we'll just quickly copy this and then paste it down below, making sure that they're now all equal false within our hidden uh, reveal section. So when we press the hide button, it's not only going to hide our label, but it's going to hide both of the views. So let's check this out then. So this is just to simply demonstrate that we don't have to add uh, multiple outlets and tell also the buttons within the UI view to disappear. Again, because they're being housed within it, we can hide it as an overall. So I choose to press hide, both of the buttons are also disappeared, and then reveal. It's pretty good. So now what I'm going to do then is show you how we can hide the individual views by pressing the buttons within it. So this is again to show you how objects within the view can also determine the outcome of not only themselves being placed within the UI view, but how to hide it also. So we change the text in each of these then to simply say hide red view and then simply hide green view. We can put a capital on there. There we go. So then, we're going to get our red view button here, drag and drop it down, and I simply call it red view button there, create it as an action, connect that up, and the same goes for our green one. So green view button, and then also create that as an action and connect that up too. So I space them both out, and all we simply want them to do is for our red one, get our red view, dot hidden, space, equal space, and we set this to true. 
Now, the reason we set it to true is because the only option we've got is to actually hide the UI views. So we can only press the buttons when the UI views are being displayed. So the only option we got is to actually hide them, which by Euclid our red view to true hides it. Again, this is just to simply demonstrate how we can um, use the buttons and hide the objects that they're being displayed within. And again, it's going to have an overall effect on the button itself. So you've got a green view dot hidden to simply also equal true, and that will change it all up. So if we go to build and run now, we can see how the objects kind of perform and change the hierarchy of the view they're in with the UI view and get it to simply hide. So we can hide and reveal these objects as normal. And then we press hide red view, hides that red view, hide green view, completely hidden. So it changes exactly how the objects react. And then we can make them both reveal. So there we go. And that's simply how we can hide and reveal objects within our view. This is great for when you want to display extra content to the user, whether you're adding stuff like um, extra settings or maybe they complete a game when they're showing the game in game screen anything like that it's a pretty cool feature to have in but at any given time you may need to actually find out if an object or a view or anything like that is currently hidden in the game so let's say maybe your user collects i don't know a hidden key within the game and that hidden key is linked to a ui image view maybe and once they collect it it disappears it from the game so it's a great way to detect if objects have it's basically still there or if they've been hidden. So what I'm going to do then, close the assistant editor. I'm going to use a new UI button here. I'm going to space it out. And basically call this one, is it hidden? That's what I'm going to call it there and then place in this label. So what we're going to do, we're going to detect when the label is being hidden within our view. So this first label at the top. So if this label is hidden, we press this button and then it will display the label is hidden. If the label is not hidden, when we press the button, it will display the label is not hidden. So that's only gonna work on detection of if the label is being shown or hidden within the application. So drag and drop this new button in and create it as an action. Simply call it, is it hidden? Create that as an action. And then this new label, which I'll drag and drop it underneath our first label. And I'll simply call it label two. There we go. So within our button here, how it's gonna work is we create an if statement. So we do if, now this means if our label, our first one, dot hidden equals equals to simply true then perform what we place in between these curly brackets. So we do the two equals as we're trying to detect what that value is equal to to perform the action. So if the label dot hidden equals equals true, which means if the label is hidden, then we get our label two dot text to simply equal label is hidden. So again, that will only perform that kind of if statement and display label is hidden within our second label if our first label attribute of hidden is equal to true. Else, now else, the only other option to else is that label is not hidden. Else, we get our label to dot text to equal label is not hidden. Now we could create a secondary if statement and go if label dot hidden equals equals false, then say label is not hidden. But it's because we only got two outcomes of this whole kind of situation. It's either hidden or it's not hidden. We just do a simple if um, if and else statement. So if we go to build and run now, you can see exactly how it works and how it detects uh, that the object is hidden. So by default the label has been revealed. So is it hidden? The label is not hidden. I can press this as many times as I want, the outcome's still gonna be the same. But then when I choose to hide the label with the views themselves, now this, again, this is only working on that top label. Is it hidden? The label is hidden. Again, we can press it as many times, and again, it's working off that if statement. If it's hidden, display this in the label, else, the only other option to else is it's not hidden, display this, and I'll reveal it. The label is not hidden. 
So this is how we can simply, again, hide and reveal objects to our users at any given time. How we can hide multiple objects within a simple UI view, so we don't have to create as many outlets and say, button one, button two, button three, and so on and so on has to be hidden. And how we can detect whether or not uh, the objects within our applications are hidden or revealed. And whatever the outcome is, we can get actions to trigger off that. So there's many ways on how we can use the hidden attribute to our objects within our applications. And there we have it. We now have the ability to hide and reveal content at any given point to our users. Whether this would be extra stuff for them unlocking within your game or just certain information you can give them at any current point. And we have the ability to detect if content is currently being shown or hidden to our users. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you leave it a big like down below. And until next time, I will see you all soon. So goodbye. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real-life applications, links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. And I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklimmer.com, where you can find the full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklimmer. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.